We've reached the final, at least for now, episode of my Streamlabs desktop tutorial course. It's been a long road. I, I love doing these courses. I love giving a comprehensive walkthrough of streaming software because I know that many of you want to stream and just don't have time to sit there and read documentation or poke at programs. And I've helped many of you stream, and I hope to help many more. And I wish these videos were around before I started making them for me to learn this stuff, as things were really freaky before we had you know, the easy software we have today. Today is a special one because we're covering the way that you can use mobile apps with Streamlabs to interact with your stream, to control it, or to stream on the go. So this is going to be a little funky with how I record this since a lot of it's going to take place on the phone, but I wanted to make this and feature everything here for you today. So the first one we're going to cover is actually Streamlabs Remote, which allows you to control your stream, kind of like a stream deck of sorts, with your phone, which is a huge bonus. It gives you a lot of functionality here, and it has a couple other features. And then we will transition over to talking about actually streaming on your phone. And I may just kind of go outside and go live for a bit outside as I wrap up that video. Uh, thank you for sticking with me, and thank you to Streamlabs for sponsoring this tutorial course. Links to everything will be in the description down below. Before we do anything on the phone, we actually need to turn on something in Streamlabs desktop. If you go over here to settings on your left and go down to remote control, by default, this is actually turned off. You want to turn this on or else you won't be able to connect. Now, there are other programs that you can use to control Streamlabs desktop through WebSockets like Touch Portal and a bunch of other options. So you can allow third party connections for this. Turning this on will show your connection information. So don't show this on stream. I'm not going to show it on the video. We are just using the Streamlabs apps today anyway. So we just need that first one enabled and then we can flip over to our phone. All right, next up, we have Streamlabs Remote. This is the remote control application that allows you to control Streamlabs desktop from your phone. You will generally need to be on the same network for this to work most effectively, but it is synced up to your Streamlabs account. And like I said, you do need to have it enabled. In Streamlabs Mobile here, we have a lot of basic options right away, just a whole deck of buttons to control your stream. So by default at the top, you have some fairly basic controls here, such as going live, starting recording, and saving replay, as well as entering studio mode. But you can customize what all of the other ones look like, because clearly here we just have every source available to us, as well as even switching themes, which is crazy that you can even set that up. This is the default remote view. You also have the event viewer which will show you your recent stream events. If you are streaming actively, it's going to show you your tips, your subs, whatever. we are. And then it can filter that based on platform. You can view your stream chat live right here. And if you go to settings, you can customize your layout and as far as whether it's portrait or landscape, uh, how many buttons you have available on your grid, which is pretty neat. You can customize it entirely. Maybe I want it to be set to landscape. You can have themes. For your buttons, which is pretty sick. Just built in here. They have some free ones as well as some Streamlabs Ultra ones that kind of match the, <laughs> the, the Streamlabs themes you might be using for your stream, which is wild. I'm going to go ahead and choose the Lo-Fi Neon Ultra theme. Customize the label color, the icon color, all of that good stuff. as well as the ability to keep your phone from falling asleep while this app is open, which is awesome. And a couple other, you can turn on haptic feedback so that you know when you're pressing the buttons, which is pretty sick. Now if I turn my phone horizontal, there we go. Now we have a horizontal stream controller that we can scroll. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start recording and we are recording here in Streamlabs right away. It's actually really responsive, despite being from a mobile device. I can save a replay if you have that set up. I'm gonna stop recording, you can go live. I can switch to studio mode, which I don't really use a whole lot. I don't think it's going I don't think I have it enabled at all, actually. Uh, we can switch scenes. That is just about instant. Like it is pretty quick here. I am very impressed, all things considered. Like I hit that button and it is changing. I am I'm quite happy with that. Then you can mute your microphone. Blah 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 blah. You can hide sources. That. It's pretty straightforward. I don't know what else I need to tell you, honestly. I'm going to switch back to intermission. Now, of course, you have the option to go live with your Streamlabs mobile app directly from your phone itself, which is what I'm going to show you next. 
All right, that's gonna be a little shaky, but this is the Streamlabs mobile app. It's actually pretty neat here. You can see here we have a standard kind of UI at the bottom. We have the ability to flip our camera to the front or rear cameras. We can mute our microphone. We can go live. We can pull up chat, which is great. We don't have any chat because we're not live yet. We can pull up our event list. See immediately our event list of who has streamed to us. All, and then obviously we have the overlay of it from the scene that I created, all at our fingertips, ready to go. This is what I've been wanting. You all who have watched, I'm looking up at my normal webcam. I got to look at this one. You all who have watched my videos in the past know that I have been looking for a solution to more easily stream from mobile, but not lose the, the polish and the touch of streaming from a desktop. We're getting very close here. All right, I'm going to open up the menu. Nope, not that menu, this menu. Here we have a lot of options. You can link your accounts just like in normal Streamlabs, because you can with Streamlabs Ultra multi-stream to multiple platforms at one time, which is really sick. Stream settings, you can actually optimize your settings a little bit here. So you can control resolution, frame rate, all that jazz, which is crazy for a mobile thing. We did not have this just a few years ago at this point. So I could do 1080p 60 and then say I want to stream eight megs per second, which is the max that Twitch will support at the moment from this thing. You can change your audio settings. Sample rate, which microphone you're using, so you can plug in an external microphone if you'd like. Change your guest audio if you'd like as well, because this does support bringing in guests. Camera settings. Mirror front camera. Uh, I don't know if we need that. You can turn on video stabilization. It says it should not be done because it will add additional latency, but we can do the auto, which should like reduce latency as a choice. You can enable continue auto settings or disable them, which is really cool. Resize it to fill the aspect ratio for your preview. Lock your orientation, which is pretty interesting. Let's see. Do we need the mirror? Oh, there is a lot of latency there. That is a lot of latency. All right. We don't want stabilization. Our shirt is backwards, so we will want to mirror it. Yeah, we got we to gotta turn that off. Hold on. <laughs> wow. Okay. I did not know stabilization added that much latency. So we do want mirroring on. All right, there we go. Our shirt is frontward forward. Frontward forward. Yeah, technically that is correct. I can speak. Screen capture settings. So again, resolution frame rate. Because not only can you stream your your camera, but you can stream your actual video games as well, which is awesome. So again, 1080p 60, 8 megabits per second. You want the same set. I, I want the same high quality settings for both versions. Aspect fit or fill. We want to fit because we want to just do a standard 16 by 9 stream and then we're going to turn down our screen sharing app audio very low because we do not want our game overpowering our microphone you can do some test recordings and balance that however you'd like events list you can actually filter these which is great i already have my filter set up it just picked up my normal streamlab filters which is awesome twitch settings so you can disable emotes tags change your ingest server good stuff there Chat settings, you can change the size and stuff of your chat that shows up, as well as adaptive bitrate is turned on, which will automatically adjust based on your internet signal and things like that, which is very important. Encoder compression mode, average or constant. A constant is broadly a better for live streaming. And if you have iOS 16 or newer, you probably want to enable that. Nice. We want to disable the feedback pop up for now. All right. That is pretty sick. Then you can change themes. So you can pull in full Streamlabs Ultra themes if you have Streamlabs Ultra right here, which is amazing. So you don't lose any real, I mean, it, it, you may not find one that perfectly matches what you're doing, but like you don't lose personality by streaming to mobile, which was always a big deal for me. Looks like they have a bunch of specifically curated mobile themes. Hopefully they'll expand that in the future because this is awesome. I'll just go with rainbow. Why not? We're going to create a new scene. Then you can choose pre-made layouts or custom ones. You can see here. So the icons, obviously, you got chat. You got your webcam, your event list, your alerts. You can even get alerts here, which is rad. I probably don't want event list. I just want the alerts and my chat. So I think I will go with this one. Create a new scene. And then you can customize that a little bit more. So maybe alert box goes here. Chat goes all the way down here. Save. Use pre-made layout. Oh, for the so you get separate portrait and landscape ones. So again, I wanna I wanna use the pre-made layout. That's fine. 
And then you can customize where these go on mobile as well. So I actually want to delete the event list. Chat was fine where it was, but now I already messed it up. Alert box up in the corner and save. Your layout will change. Using the theme will change your current layout and widgets. Apply. Applied successfully. So after themes, you can customize your disconnect protection so that if you lose a signal for a bit, it's going to show a be right back screen. You can turn that off if you'd like for some reason, but I don't. I don't know why you'd want to necessarily. You can customize your alerts, what you want them to show. So like, I don't want Twitch follows. The rest are fine. I don't want normal YouTube subscriptions. The rest are fine. So I love that you can customize those. You can also, you have a link to set up your tipping if you don't already have that set up. All right. I can see here we have our, our stream set up and we can go live. I guess I'm going to go do that. We're going to go do a test stream. I'll see you in a bit. I know I have spent a lot of my career. Every time I stream, I get that I'm so back feeling and then it lasts a week. Yes, exactly. But like, I understand that I've been an advocate of higher quality streams and that like I help people sort that out. But the people who get this obsessed over like a little bit of micro blocking in your live streams and stuff, viewers do not care. That's not why they're here. The channels that get additional viewers because of quality are a drop in the bucket compared to actual stream viewership. None of that matters as long as you're entertaining and have something worthwhile. And it's so easy to think that you do and then just fall back to obsessing over the technical details or the pixel quality or whatever. But realistically, if you're gonna find success, a little bit of image quality is not what's gonna hold you back, period. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I like doing this stuff. If you'd be interested in these kinds of streams more, do let me know, because I would be totally happy to do streams if I can do them in these quick run and gun ways and not a formal production. As much as I love setting up all my multicam stuff and doing whatever, it's a real hindrance to just kind of getting FaceTime with you all when I'm when I have a busy schedule. So thank you so much for watching this final again for now episode of my Streamlabs desktop tu tutorial course, if I can even say it. Let me know what questions you have about using it still in the comments below. There's a lot we can cover. We can keep this train rolling. Like I said, I, my goal is to educate content creators and streamers on this channel as much as I can. Thank you for your support. Thank you for a wonderful year so far. It's been better than the past couple of years, just all things considered. There's a lot of bad things happening in the world, but over here in our little corner of the internet, it's not been so bad. Uh, be sure to comment, like, subscribe. Remember to be kind. Rewind. See ya. Got some cool stuff coming. I did launch a cooking channel. If you haven't seen it, neurospicy.cooking. Check the Discord. I will post it there as well. Like, Go check out the cooking blog. I have a YouTube channel for it. We just passed 200 subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you so much. Go check that out. Go check out the Dual Com podcast with BBK Dragoon, and I will see you later.